What is going on, Kaferos? Just wanted to let you know this video is indeed monetized and every single dime of ad revenue will go to Kyle and his family. Now, who is Kyle, you may ask? Corporal Kyle Moser, a Marine who defended our country in Afghanistan, losing both of his legs in the process. Hearing Kyle's story, former NFL star Jared Allen donated this fully handicap accessible home through his nonprofit organization, Wounded Warriors. Kyle and his beautiful wife, Alex, are expecting their first child, a girl, next month. Soon, all three of them will be living the Aquascape lifestyle. Today, we are building a pond for Kyle Moser. It's going to be a great one, and I hope you enjoy the video. What is going on, fellas? Welcome back to another video here. Listen, I came with no jacket. I came with no shoes. I'm freezing, but we're going to make this happen today. Greg! Where's Greg at? Yeah, here, right here. Greg, better at explaining things. Kyle's gonna be so stoked. Oh my gosh. It, well, what's so cool is I didn't realize this is his master bedroom. This is right outside his master bedroom. He's sitting here in his little tank, like wheelchair. Yeah, I got a wheelchair. Show that you thing. might as well whip him. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he said he's had it for four years, but he's been living in like a townhome. He hasn't had a yeah. place to drive it. Now you got, what, how many acres here? 4.2 acres. 4.2 acres. Dude, dude that's awesome. the coolest thing is when, when we were thinking about building in the front yard or the backyard, we were putting a flagpole with a green flag and an American flag in the front. I didn't realize this is your master bedroom. Yeah. So, all right. So, this is, uh, so when, we, when we're building the waterfalls, I want you to get a little dirty. So, you're going to oh, use the foam gun, and I'm going to put you out there, and you're going to help build your own waterfalls, okay? okay? Sounds good. Sounds good. So, Kyle is the man. He's the one we're going to be building this pond for today. Uh, I'm stoked for it. Look at this. Look how many people came out on their own dime to uh, help build this amazing uh, waterfall feature so we're gonna get started it's gonna be a dope build koi fish will be in it one day and he can come out here and just scroll up on his little mini tank over there and uh, enjoy the fish professional kitchen got the walk-in sinks all yep. these cabinets up here they come down come down and out awesome buddy. wow like, look at this every single uh, little cabinet here has this little drop down and it comes straight down at that like look how cool is that? Oh my lord. Talk about a vault. <laughs> wow. Got all the guns, guns in here. So. <laughs> it's a safe room. So this thing right here. Let's put those in houses for people who have a safe room. What the heck is that? That's a bullpup AR. Yeah. yeah. This is your gun right here. That's a bullpup AR. This is your gun. Oh. You know, like, so what do you is, got? This is a tactical dude. shotgun. Holy. You put ASG. seven in this side, seven in the other two. That is 15 so round cool. shotgun. Oh, that's, shotgun. I like that. What is this called? The go box? So everyone, so technically you have what's called a go bag. Yep. And the go bag is like something about this size of a backpack, which is filled with military gear, survival gear that make you last for like about a week. Yep. And, uh, I call it my survival box because I got all sorts of stuff. I got my helmet, my Kevlar helmet in here. In the back right corner, that's my med bag. Oh wow, this helmet's actually pretty heavy. Yeah. It's yeah. very So we just came in the house, we're checking out all the guns and uh what, look, how do you what do you think about this house so far? Small right? Exactly, literally. Oh, yeah. This place you know, is amazing. And especially when you have that waterfall sound outside. Oh, yeah. It's going to be crazy. You're going to enjoy it a lot. It's a five by eight piece. Exactly. we got to build that bridge with all the wood. It's going to be awesome. Stay tuned, y'all. So we got the bio falls here. Cool up. I'm guessing we're going to turn right here and uh, drop off into the pond right there. Which gives him the perfect view from his master bedroom and also a perfect view from our, looks like to be like some sort of patio over there. The rock has clearly arrived. There's a good amount of rock. I don't know if that's enough though, but uh, we got a lot of rock. I think, is there more rock coming? That's it, that's him coming. There's more rock coming down the driveway right now. Oh my God, he fell, he's off the machine. He's up, he's chasing it. No, I'm kidding. Paul, you ready to go to Wasco? Greg? Paul. God! <laughs> <laughs> we are now at Wasco Nursery, and we're picking out some plants for this beautiful aquascape water feature that we're making right now. And uh, this, this place is huge, let me tell you. I mean, it's massive, massive. So we have a lot of choices to pick from. And uh, Kyle's up there, and he's gonna 
do his little pickings. The natural area yeah. out behind. So this place is crazy. Look at this. Is on the, on the so many different plants. And when we were driving up, I go, yo, you got Christmas trees. And he goes, yep, look, <laughs> Christmas trees. Look at how natural that looks. Yeah. Thanks, Chuck. Appreciate it. So this was a build a pond day for Pondemonium maybe 10 or 11 years ago. Holy moly. Look how See, they've already started rocking in the pond. They've got the drainage pipe right here. And we were gone for probably like 45 minutes to an hour. They're killing it. There's like, once again, 35 something people doing this build. So it's going really quick. And uh, to be honest, half the pond's already done. It's insane. Get it? <laughs> Yeah, you didn't get it. And uh, you, you didn't get it, did you? Uh -uh. <laughs> Check that out. I never knew a truck could do that. Now you just open the side and you don't even have to dump it. Interesting. Double amputee veteran from the war in Afghanistan from 2010-2011. Military and delayed entry program with my parents' permission. I was an only child, so it was pretty difficult to get her to do that. But at 16 years old, I got my mom to sign the, the papers to join at 18. So I left for infantry boot camp in July of 2010, and then from there I went to school of infantry on the West Coast, and then from there I got assigned to my unit, Second Battalion, Fourth Marines, at Camp Pendleton, where I did roughly. Nine months of training, we did mountain warfare training, desert warfare training to prepare for Afghanistan. Um, when I was in Afghanistan, I was primarily working the radio, uh, working for the CO and, and the LT, just running, uh, relaying information back and forth. So I was assigned to 2nd Battalion, 4th Marines, went to Afghanistan in 2011, August of 2011, and I was there for three months before getting blown up twice within 10 days. Um, the first time I got blown up, I was in an up armored Humvee, it's a, called a Mat V, and I was up on the 50 cal. And fortunately, I uh, just banged, banged up my knee a little bit, but you know, I joke and say I don't feel that anymore. Um, banged up my knee a little bit and I uh, got concussed. Both explosions, I didn't get knocked out, I was awake for both, both explosions and guided my guys through that. Um, Immediately got down off the or off the 50 cal. I got down off the 50 cal and got on the radio to call him the medevac. And I got this guy to my right yelling at me, call him the medevac, call him the medevac. And his his bones sticking out of his leg, and just all this is going on. And I'm feeling like a piece of crap because I can't help this guy. My radio is broken. So I pop a red flare to to let everybody know we need help. And uh, about 10 15 minutes later, we got him medevac to the bird and. When he was medevac to the bird, he was at a different LZ, a different landing zone location than we were at where the blast was. And so while we were sitting there waiting for EOD to come, we had heard on Taliban transmissions that they were setting up dragging off sniper positions on our vehicle. So we told the guys up in the gunners to get down so they didn't get sniped at. Uh, we were sitting there for about like 20, 30 minutes, just scared out of our minds, thinking we were just going to get sniped at. And, and this was it. But, you know. Time surpassed and EOD showed up with an eight vehicle convoy and scared off the Taliban and we were able to get back to base and resume with operations. Um, so I was, I got blown up with the Mat V and uh, I was out for like five to six days and then they started integrating me back in with the unit where I stood post security for the base. Um, and then about three days after that, so 10 days after that first explosion, we were on a dismounted patrol conducting KLEs, which are key leader engagements which is where our superiors, our COs, talk with the elders and the mullahs of the villages and try to get them to tell us what, in, what needs to be done in their village. So we brought electricity to some villages. We had left early that morning at like 0430 in the morning, still dark out. That's when we like to get out there and set things up. Um, and we were, we were doing that for three or four hours into, into the morning. My buddy was sweeping with, with a metal detector clearing the route while I was carrying the rocket launcher. 
And uh, like I said, you know, three, four hours into that, my, my buddy metal detecting is pretty tired. So I told my team leader, hey, you know what? Why don't you let me take the metal detector and I can trade them out for this rocket launcher. And so that's what we did. And uh, 15 minutes later, we came into this ravine to provide security for the KLE. And, uh, you know, we were sitting in that ravine holding security. And that whole entire time, about 10 feet away from me was the IED. And coming up on it, when we uh, resume with the patrol to continue to the next village, you know, I was looking at this area and I was just feeling unsure about it. It just, it looked like somebody had just dug a hole there, you know, it's exactly what an IED would look like. Us being the Marine Corps, we kind of get the hand-me-downs from the Army, you know, we don't get the greatest, uh, greatest of gear. So, in Afghanistan, uh, while I was there, we had two different metal detectors. We had one that detected carbon fiber rods and one that did not, and obviously the one I was using did not detect carbon fiber rods. So when I put my metal detector over it, I was not getting any hits. You know, I walked a little bit further with my metal detector, still no hits, and I was not feeling good about the situation. So I turned around to my team leader and I said, hey, what do you want me to do? I'm not feeling good about this. And he said, all right, why don't you turn around, go around the area you're suspicious about, we'll jump out of the ravine, move around it, and then we'll get back into the ravine because it's providing good cover. I'm like, okay, good to go. So I turn around and I look to my buddy, standing up on the ridge line there, like right next to the ravine. And I'm like, yeah, Moser just saved the day. And in that moment, that's when I got blown up. It was something out of a movie. Him and I remember just making, I made eye contact, eye contact with him. And I was just like, yeah, you know, who's the bad dude? And uh, I was so motivated. And in that moment, I just got blown up. And I remember being flown through the air, just blackness all around me, just smoke. You know, you can't see anything. And in that moment, flying through the air, it's like, what's happening to me right, right now? And I, I remember having the thought, oh, I'm getting blown up. And so I land on the ground and the side note here. So my team leader was right behind me when I got blown up and sent flying through the air, I hit him and he said it was like getting hit by a two by four in a tornado. And my body just leveled him and sent him straight to the ground. And he got, uh, some shrapnel on his face and everything like that, but he, but he's doing good. Um, but yeah, so I, just, I landed immediately, still can't see anything, all the dust is settling, and I'm just yelling for my teammates, you know, Hanson, mm -hmm. Crandall, where are you at? And it felt like 30 minutes went by, nothing, you know, and I'm just like, this is it, I'm gonna die. And uh, that, that 30 minutes in reality was about, you know, three minutes. Um, felt like 30 because everything that I was going through, but uh, you know, th three minutes passed by. I tried to apply the turn. So we have tourniquets in each one of our extremities in case things like this happen. So I have a tourniquet, right arm, left arm, left leg, right leg, and I go for my tourniquet. But my arm was holding out the metal the metal detector and got blasted. You know, and I go to lift up my my right arm to grab the tourniquet, and it's just going like this, and I can't move it. I can't make a fist, and my arm is just shot. And so mentally, I knew I was processing things and I was able to understand what was happening, but physically my body was just going through this huge shock and I wasn't even, I wasn't able to do anything. So I just had to lay there and wait for them to come. And like I said, three minutes later they came and you know, the way we're trained, you don't come up on somebody and say, oh dude, you're, you're your cause is lost. Sorry, man. I'm just, you're just going to die. You know, so you come up on the Marine and say, Hey, you know, you're going to make it, you're going to be fine. We're going to get you back in the States. And I knew that, you know, I knew that was coming. I knew Hanson and Fisher, the guys that were assessing me, I knew that that was the routine and they were going to say, Hey, you know, it's going to be okay. And, uh, me being awake in the situation and, and trying to be there for my guys, I said to them, you know, Hey, you know, don't tell me that, you know, don't tell me that. It, and I told him, I said, Hanson, I'm going to die. It's okay. You know, it, you can let me die. It's okay. Don't blame yourself. So he applied the tourniquet and I was bleeding out and I thought I was going to die. And I didn't and kept my eyes open. And he kept saying to me, you know, we'll get you back in the States. We'll get you back, back in the States. And I was like, no, it's okay. It's okay. And I said, tell my fam my wife and my family and friends, I'm sorry I couldn't be with them the last time. And I got my guys all around me like, oh man, he just got put through the ringer, you know, like is it, is, he's not going to make it. And like all these questions are running through their minds and I can see it in their faces that they're just, oh, man, I wish, 
no, it just beats me up. But seeing, seeing their faces, because that's just one of the hardest things. Seeing other I don't care about myself, you know. I was worried about my guys. <clears throat> you know, Paul? You let me know if you want to just... No, you're good. <clears throat> but the fact of the matter is, you know, I, di I didn't see my brother get blown in half. And <clears throat> it, it really was tough on me leaving the battlefield, leaving them to finish the deployment. <clears throat> but uh, it is what it is. And that's war. And that's the things that uh, life puts you through. Unfortunately, I live in the greatest country in the world that takes care of me. But, you know, we need to look after those the people you know that don't have physical wounds and it's all up here and we need we need to look out for those guys because although you can't see the battle that they're fighting mentally they have you know they may have a lot of demons that they're dealing with and you know the VA doctors may say I have some form of PTSD but the things that everyone else is dealing with from the, the, the traumas of war is nothing in comparison to what you know what I'm dealing with my wounds are physical, and everyone in this country more or less wants to help me out, and that's proven here today. Um, so nothing but thanks to, to everyone for taking care of me. But you know, now it's now it's my turn to, to give back and, and raise raise money to the organizations that helped me during my recovery, and when I was a dirt bag from all the medications that that I've been given. But to to wrap it up. They, uh, they got me in a secure location, and man, I'll, you know, I'll never forget the day that I left my brothers out there. And uh, they put me on the chopper, and, and he said, we'll see you back in the States. And off I went, and I went to Bagram Air Force Base, and then from there I went to Longstuhl, Germany, back to Walter Reed in Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, but the Taliban, I, I told you, Paul, they, they, they play dirty, and they... Mm -hmm put feces in their IDs and and I got E. coli the first like 10 days of getting back and uh, you know there's a lot of other stuff going on I was with another amputee, he was a triple amputee, he had one, one limb left and a flesh eating bacteria virus from Afghanistan took that limb out and he's a quadruple amputee now so you know my fight is so little in comparison to everything else that's going on with, with veterans in the world and the way that we treated Vietnam veterans disgusts me and that needs to be checked with. And I hope, I hope a lot of people see this video and, and you know, they start thanking older veterans because it's not just about the young guys. They're going to be around for a long time. But these older guys that have been through some stuff that you can't even imagine, you need to be thanking them. So. All right, appreciate it. Hey. Thank you so much for, right. thanks for your service. Sorry to hold it in. What a powerful message. Now you guys got to know Kyle a bit better. Midway through the build here, I went in there and I was like, Kyle, I asked him beforehand, hey, do you mind telling your story? If not, totally cool. And he was like, no, I would love to. And uh, that was that. Hopefully you enjoyed it. But we're gonna get back to the pond build now. They have gotten so far. Literally, you leave for like an hour and they just go at it. Look at this. They got three hoses. Look at all them water plants coming in. Wow, lilies, everything. This pond is coming together very, very quickly. To oh, and the lenses. There we go. Coming together very quickly. I believe they're putting a bridge right here. I could be wrong. I think they're putting like a, a wooden bridge, which we'll get to. But this is gonna be really, really cool because the courses can actually swim upstream. They can't probably go any further than that right there, but they can come up here, which would be really dope. So as we were actually doing this waterfall over here, they started planting. This pond is coming together so quick. Water's crystal clear. Plants are all in. Look at the cypress trees over there. Nice cypress trees right here. I've got some big ones that are about that tall at my house. This is where the bridge will go. We're not gonna put the bridge in today because they need to like finish it. Golly, look at this moss work. Insane. Every little crack.
always amazing to see how everybody comes together. It's just a moving machine. What did you think of this case process, buddy? Dirt. Just yeah, just think about what it looked like when we came here and what it looks like now. So here we go. Here we go. Kyle, it's going. <laughs> Not going. No. Oh God. Okay. What happened? <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> That looks so good. Oh, look at that waterfall. All right, okay, we're gonna let it turn it up. Kyle's gonna turn it up. Here, hit the remote. What do we want to four or five? Yeah. yeah, it's up to you. Oh, yeah. Well, ten. Yeah. Yeah. Max it out. That backs it out, 10. Did you make that purposely on the left hand side, Brad? Okay. No, that's what you get. Oh, yeah. Dude, that is so dope. Thank you. All you guys. All right, come on over here. Check this out. Wow. Did it. Did it, brother. <laughs> so fun. Can't wait to do it again. Oh, All right. I remember recording. Yeah, yeah. Second winner is being chosen. Remember. Kyle, give me your initial thought. All the thanks in the world to you guys. Thank you so Isn't much. Isn't that insane? The All sound, the sound, right? Is it better than you thought day. it would be? Oh yeah. <laughs> the landscape is unreal. You know what's cool is it, it goes right into where you're actually living. Yeah. So like a lot of the stuff we the, that they made the right pond there. with is from there. Yeah. We got one more surprise, guys. We got one more surprise for Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> nice. Oh, hey, check it out. This is your new singer. Comments at singerchair.com. How about this? <laughs> the singer. Yeah. My high school, my junior high and high school buddy invented this. I was with him two weeks ago and I said, can you donate one to Kyle? I sent one to Kyle. He goes, that's super cool because I don't. I want an electric chair, but not something big and bulky. That's exactly why this was invented. This is your little speed one. This is the <laughs> wheel. Just like a track vehicle. Yeah, low. So Just speed low. low. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was whipping it. And when he saw this, I told the colleague, "I wanted an electric chair, but something that's lighter weight. You can put in and out of your car. The thing, whole thing collapses, and you can pick it up and put it away." That's the so. grocery store whip right there. I've given away a lot of pods. I've never given away a mechanical wheelchair before. So this is a first, brother. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I love my job. So look, they got low speed, medium speed, high speed, reverse. This is sick. Stand the man, you came to pick me up. Right. Traffic? We gotta go. We gotta go. Alright, let me get one couple more shots of this beautiful water feature here. And I gotta say bye to Kyle. Alright? Alright, one sec. Love you for sticking around. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Probably my favorite video I've ever made in my life. Best experience I've ever had in my life. Thank you all so much. If you haven't done this already, of course, join the family. Subscribe down below. That subscribe button, you just click it. After that, you can click the bell and you'll be notified every time I upload. Once again, like the video if you haven't done this already. My boy Kyle has a new Aquascape Pond and also a new wheelchair. Until next time, I will see you in that next video. Peace.